I am surrounded by so many strong, amazing women that I sometimes forget that not everyone is as pro women as I am. It boggles my mind to think that there are still people today who believe that a woman without a man is like a crust without a pie filling. Pointless. Because the only point of a crust is to hold that filling, right? And only then does it become pie and fulfill its destiny. Personally, I think we women are a lot more than pie crusts. We have our own destinies and we don't need anyone to complete us. We are enough exactly as we are. But all of those romantic songs and movies and ads portray couples as the default. And singles are just one half of a future whole because you haven't made it until you've got a diamond ring on that finger, none of which is true. And you want to know who knows the truth? It is those elderly ladies staring down the end of their lives without a man in sight because society tells us that those women should be feeling alone and desperate. But do they? Well, let's find out. Hi, I'm Amy Waterman. I am a love expert here at yourbrilliance.com. And in this video, we will find out the secret behind all those fabulous single ladies living life their way. There is one thing that every single lady must have to be happy, and it's not a toy boy. Back when I was in my 20s, I asked my grandmother why she had never remarried after my grandfather died. And you know what she did? She just laughed. And she said, why would I want to take care of a man? She was perfectly happy. She was. Thank you very much. Now, she was happy because her life was so full. She had a strong group of friends from her teaching days who met once a week for dinner. And she had family in and out all the time. She had a community that surrounded and supported her. And so for her, all a man would add was extra work because she was living life exactly as she pleased. And she wasn't going to give that up. I remember feeling so surprised by her answer because at the time, I didn't see that connection between relationships and extra work. For me, relationships were just about fun. It was about having somebody to go out with. And it wouldn't be until my 30s that I finally understood what my grandmother was saying. My 30s was the decade where I tried to have it all, right? I tried to be the perfect partner in my relationship, the perfect employee on the job, and still pursue all of my personal dreams. But you know what? I couldn't do it. It was too much and something had to give. And I think as women, we feel so much pressure to be everything to everyone. It's our job to make our bosses happy and our partner happy and our parents happy and our kids if we have them happy and our own happiness just seems optional. And we often learn to be satisfied with what I call secondary pleasure, which is the pleasure of giving pleasure to others. Today, I see why my grandmother was so much happier in her life as a retired widow. She was in charge of her life. She had very few demands on her and she didn't have to compromise or please anyone. And she's not alone. Here in this small community where I live right now, about a third of the residents are over 65. Now, I've never made a formal survey about this, but the women living on their own, the widows, the unmarried, have a very different life to the women who still have husbands. The women with husbands, by and large, do what their husbands want them to do. Whereas the women living on their own have created their own unique community. They rely on each other for support through health crises. They get together on the holidays and their friendships have become something like a family. Now, back when I was 20, I probably would have looked at these women and felt sorry for them. Because don't we all dream of sitting on a porch rocker with the love of our life and reminiscing about the past 50 years together? But what I have come to realize over the years is that it is so much more common to see two elderly ladies sitting on porch rockers side by side, knitting, shelling peas, telling stories, and laughing. We women are there for each other, and our friendships last even when men come and go. When you have a group of strong women holding you up, you can survive anything. You can survive divorce, the death of a spouse, a child's addiction, a health crisis, because women know what to do when other women are struggling. They intuitively provide that care and support that's needed. 
But when you're in a marriage where your primary, if not only support person is your husband and life tests you, your marriage can suffer beneath the weight of all of that stress and all of that grief. Men don't always intuitively provide the support we need. Sometimes they shut down or close off or get angry or walk away. And we are left trying to hold it all up by ourselves. And we can't do it. And we start to feel resentful and we may even feel bitter because we think after all of these years together, he can't do this after everything we've done to support him. This dream of a perfect marriage that I had back when I was young and naive, the dream of a man who would always hold me when I cried, who would always be there when I needed him, and who would protect me from ever having to feel alone again, was really just that. It was a dream. Now, sometimes women get lucky and meet perfect men, but the vast majority of women find that there's someone much better when you need a shoulder to cry on or an ear to listen or somebody that truly understands what you're going through. And that's a friend. Good friends are always there on the other end of the line if you ever need to call. Good friends are always up to going to that new movie with you. Good friends will hear you out when you have to rant for hours about that horrible thing that just happened to you. And good friends don't think you're crazy and they don't think you're being too emotional. They get it because they do the same things too. The older I get, the more amazing I think women are. I see what women go through. I see how much they struggle and I see how much they have to deal with. And they put so much pressure on themselves to always keep smiling and always have a positive attitude and always help others. Which is why it makes me feel quite mad when I hear anyone devalue women. Like those guys who say that women had better get married before they hit a wall because no one's going to want them after a certain age and they'll be doomed to living alone with 20 cats. These guys don't have any clue, right? Because they know they're going to end up becoming that creepy guy living alone in a tiny apartment eating microwave meals if they don't get a woman to look after them. And so they assume it's the same for women, but it's not because once women hit a certain age, they become powerful. Like they take charge of their life and they start doing the things they always wanted to do. They refuse to let social conventions or other people's rules hold them back. It reminds me of that brilliant poem by Jenny Joseph that goes, when I am an old woman, I shall wear purple with a red hat, which doesn't go and doesn't suit me. And the narrator of the poem fantasizes about all the havoc she's going to wreak as an old woman. Then concludes, but now we must have clothes that keep us dry and pay our rents and not swear in the street and set a good example for the children. We must have friends to dinner and read the papers. But maybe I ought to practice a little now so that people who know me are not too shocked and surprised when suddenly I am old and I start to wear purple. Now, Jenny, the poet, was 29 when she wrote that poem, and she passed away recently in 2018 at the age of 85. Now, if Jenny decided that she should start shocking people at 29, then maybe it's time that you and I start practicing, just so that the people around us aren't too shocked and surprised when we start doing things our way. Going back to those men who claim that women should be married before they get all old and shriveled up. I suspect some of what these guys don't like is the way that single women of a certain age can't be controlled because they want to make sure those women are married off before they get too many ideas in their heads. But once you reach a certain age and you're no longer trying to get a man to marry you anymore, you have a fabulous kind of freedom. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks of you. You've got your friends. You don't need more. You have just this one wild and precious life and you are going to treasure it. So here is what I would like to leave you with. Find a few good friends who align with your rebel heart and never let those friendships slide. Treat them as lifelong investments and don't let drama or men get between you and your friends. 
With just a few good friends at your back, you can do anything. You have a safety net to catch you if you fall. You can date unsuitable men. You can fall in love but not get married. You can find a guy but never lean on him too hard because you have the support of your posse. As my grandmother taught me, there's nothing shameful about not wanting a man in your life right now. Sometimes that's the only way you can find the freedom to live your life exactly the way you please. Take really, really good care of yourself, and I will see you next time.